Actually, I really don't know, but I can give a kind of conjecture. Conjecture was there were earlier filmmakers around, you know, you got films like the works of uh, uh, Bhuvan Shom, works of Mani Kaul, Kumar Shani, which preceded us. And uh, films of Arvindan and Adur. And that was a kind of, one felt that it is possible to sort of attempt to get into the business, to, to get into the medium with a certain kind of seriousness of intent. Uh, I think that was the reason there were examples before us, you know. I suppose that was one of the reasons. The other was also that personally, I think one, 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 one makes a choice of where one, one, uh, where one wants to go. So uh, quite a few of us made that choice of saying, you know, we will do uh, serious work. By serious work, I don't, don't necessarily mean lack of humor in it, but the intent is, uh, I think, integral. That was the reason, I suppose. You no, know, uh, what we were saying, I think, at that particular point of time, is that 90% of the films that are being made, or 95% of the films that are being made, have to do with uh, what is called entertainment. Why not? What is the harm of 5%? You know, if we're only demanding 5% of space. And... Uh, it wasn't too much of a demand then. Uh, so uh, I suppose that was it. Not that we were, uh, I'm personally against any kind of what's called popular cinema. It isn't that at all. But uh, I happen to be a serious man and I uh, would like to see that world also being reflected in terms of images. And uh, that's what most of us try to do. I don't think it's got to do with cinema. Sudarshan. A world changed. And then in that also cinema. An entire world changed around us. It collapsed around us. We could see, we can see the debris all over. Either in politics or art or music or cinema or architecture for that matter. That world collapsed, which was, which had space for an alternative way of seeing. That collapse around. Net result is there's no space. Earlier there was space, now none. Or oh, you've got to fight very, very hard to get, get that space. You know, now some, like I said, I, I feel like a fossil. You know, uh, I don't know whether the state is responsible for it. But I think an environment is extremely conducive for it. And most environments are created by a state. It doesn't mean that state has to sponsor or fund or, or back. But an environment is required around in which alternative spaces can be generated or have can sustain themselves. That has collapsed around us. So in that sense, yes, the state is responsible. One can't really put the blame only on individuals who have perhaps have shifted gear into another direction, but it's important to understand a mahal, an environment, uh, a vision. That's important, for which I think the state is primarily responsible. I don't think so. I don't think so. What is important is that one has to understand that the NFDC as an organization, uh, it has a constitution, it had a vision and a raison d'etre. But the people to implement that raison d'etre, that's crucial, no matter what policies you have, whether it's the constitution of India or the, or the raison d'etre of the, of the NFDC, the implementation, you might have an extremely broad vision but it has to be backed up by the will and the foresight and the vision of people to back it up and stand by those principles. When that doesn't happen, all visions collapse. All visions. And this is nothing to do with NFDC, I'm talking about any, any, any kind of vision. It's the nature of implementation. Warning. And uh, you take a, uh, you take the NFDC. 
There's so many people there with perhaps good intentions. It's not enough. It's not enough to have the good intention. There are quite a few people, I'm sure. They exist. But to stand by it, to believe in it, where is that? To see my neck on the line. Because this is why we were there in the first place, and I stand by that. Oh, what can I mean? And then you start questioning a lot of things. Not, not, not only NFDC, forget, forget NFDC. It's an India that one saw emerging, moving in a certain direction with our problems, with our, with our, with our uh, uh, hurdles and obstacles all around us. There was an India coming forward, yeah, which one saw in a certain kind of way with a faith. Okay, we have problems, we have misgivings, we have all kinds of issues, but there was a faith in which cinema was also. Come on, we also had a dream. That was it. But then it's, wherever you turn, boom, collapse, rubble. What do you have left? I mean, look at our, look at our, look at our, look at us today. What do we have as, 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 uh, as a, examples of vision, examples of, of, of faith. What do we have? The only faith is the faith of a Bal Thakri or a VHP. That's, that's faith. That's real faith. Do, we, do I subscribe to that faith? That's also another kind of faith. What do you do? Chandra Swami? Daud Ibrahim? That's all faith. Arun Gauli? What will you do? What, what, what will you do? Truth is, this is the writing on the wall, this is the writing on the wall, and in that, also cinema. So it is the buccaneering spirit, it is not looking over your shoulder as to, as to the ramifications of what you do, not seeing the, the um, a, a, a enormous amount of destruction behind you, but to look forward. Look at us today when you have the Kandla report. You've got this massive cyclone which has taken a toll on human lives. Immense. In the 60s and 70s and 80s, there was a response. There was a response to it. There was an attitude, to, I mean, which was, there was an immense surge of sympathy and therefore in action something happened. Truth to yeah, look at the headlines today. Where are they? Those thousands of people who died. Where is the response in your in in your in, in, in the media? Except in the news. But look at you can see it actually where it's in back pages. Let's get ahead. Let's move. 